Chapter 9 Your name is sacred and when spoken will give you the key to finish your work. Magistro spoke. At the count of three, you shall be at the ultimate point of relaxation. More than you have experienced so far in your life, you will feel a comfortable, floating sensation. Relax and follow the flow of the many forces that keep you still. One, you feel yourself going into your most relaxed state, into that place of your choosing where you carry out your duties and abilities. Two, enter this world where no limits exist. Only your imagination sets your boundaries. It shall be opened up to reveal your most distant thoughts, thereby giving way to a much larger variety of ideas, moods, feelings, and points of view. Three, you are in a world of your own in Quimzon. The land you were once in has faded as if it were a dream. However, whatever happens here and whatever you learn shall be carried into your regular life as second nature. Describe to me your special place where you feel most calm and where you have no fears. Daniel replied, I stand on an endless, beautiful, grassy pasture. This is my Riddikon, the world of green breeze. There is a mile-wide lake to my left, not far from me. This lake seems to feed my dream world. It is my sentinel lake. It heightens my senses, allowing me to envision more about my world. The sky is beautiful with beautiful white clouds floating by. The sunshine is warm and comforting. This is the most beautiful place I have ever seen, and here I feel most secure. This is where I choose to do my training. Here I sense that I have a stronger connection with the power. I sense him stronger here than I have ever felt before. I can't see him, though. Yes. You are on the second level of your world, Riddikon, which is Riddikon 2. Your destiny was shown to you in Riddikon 1, where your single Amorcus tree stood in quiet darkness. Riddikon 3 will reveal the power to you. You will assemble concentration and awareness into one similar body for which you are the head. Go to your sentinel lake and take note of what you see. This lake gives you spiritual nourishment, the life of your dream, enriched by the words of the power. You get much strength, discerning, and wisdom from its waters. Concentrate on the water, and your awareness of the ambient scenes will be shown to you within moments. You will understand because the power will open your heart and mind to take in all that is presented to you. Daniel approached Sentinel Lake in Riddicon 2. He gazed at the clear water and noted to himself the odd red-colored lake bed. Sentinel Lake is uniquely beautiful, with crystal clear waters. Indeed, a source this pure must have strong powers. What will Sentinel Lake teach me, I wonder? He saw an intense flash that was a collage of every image in his dream, merged into a single picture which reflected his subconscious beliefs. This lake shows me my heart and what lies inside. It knows me. A reflection of all I believe is within this lake, while this world represents me in my entirety. There is a lot of my dream world that I do not understand. What I know now is that the quality of everyone's life will improve with each passing moment as I draw closer to finding my name. I have gained a grander wisdom, but I still have much to learn. What I don't know far exceeds what I know, even about myself. I need to learn about myself before I can tackle the problems that are prevalent in the world today. Yes, this is the place I choose, for it has the truth and will help me to become more truthful, for in a world that is of my own making, I must hold an understanding that far exceeds any other place. This is Riddicon 2, 
the world of green breeze. Magistro responded, Here then is where you shall train. You will learn how to reach your deepest inner self. Through this discovery, you will progress at a more rapid pace and experience an increased amount each time you explore. Here you can possess multiple consciousnesses, and through this will learn many things at once. Yet, you will need to learn how to control these gifts so that you will not become confused and perplexed. Your consciousness will be that of many, knowing the thoughts and actions of others. This is necessary to know how to appeal to others and bring people the best in themselves. In a place like this, there is no leader, and only your conscience will guide you, as this greater power continues to take an interest in you. I shall become a part of your dream and your training place to help you in your studies and training. Magistro sat and leaned against the cave wall. He sank into a meditative state in which he, like Daniel, didn't feel the outside world yet could still observe it. He focused on the scenes in Daniel's mind. Daniel waited expectantly and patiently for him to arrive. Magistro took only seconds to visit, but it seemed like an hour for Daniel to become aware of Magistro's presence in Riddicon too. Time was different in this place than in Quemzon. Magistro entered Daniel's dream through meditation. That one day of training was worth a month of general practice in Quemzon, and was very inspiring for Daniel. He learned more that day than he had learned in all of his ten months with Magistro combined. He found that each day that passed taught him more than his combined knowledge from the past. This exponential learning existed because he finally learned control and his mind could work at faster rates because he utilized more of his mind which led to improved performance. Daniel took an interest in Sentinel Lake as Magistro stood beside him, continuing his training. Magistro spoke, The power is closer to you, here in Riddicon too, and the power talks to you, though you usually cannot hear or understand what he says. You will speak and understand many languages sometime soon, much more than the few words of Quemzon, including the many tongues of the Spirit. By finding this place in your dream, you have touched the essence of the wise power. Take this knowledge into your mind and place it on your heart. You will then learn who you are and that you have held this experience all this time, but just never understood it. Understanding of this magnitude cannot be expressed in only the Jadarian tongue, for the words of only one language are inadequate. You must understand the songs that are sung in all their styles and ways, and you will be able to reach your divine destiny. Go deeper in this world, instructed Magistro. You must reach the next level within your spirit, that of Riddicon three, to really see. Riddicon 3 is the dream within Riddicon 2, and this dream within a dream is ever more subtle in some respects. Time will become slower and feel slower to you. Your physical body will not age much, because in a physical quimson, only a short time will elapse. You are quite advanced in the physical aspects of quimson and have incorporated them all in your mind, so you know what will be expected and what binds all the layers of existence together. You discovered this in the Iron Stone. Now go more in depth to Riddicon 3, and I will assist you. Magistro encouraged Daniel to delve deeper. The second dream, Riddicon 2, was more spiritually intensified than the regular world of Quenzon. This served to make Riddicon 3 a thousand times more intense than Riddicon 2. This intensity was required for the advanced nature of Daniel's studies. A scene of his sentinel lake in Riddicon 3 emerged in this broader and newer world. Now he could clearly see a massive mountain to the north and a forest to the east. His lake stood to the west, and the endless grassy plain continued south on the horizon. This time, Daniel could see the power quite clearly. The power gazed intently at him with a satisfied look. 
Daniel had partially seen the power in his peace vision and felt him in his soul song world of Riddikon 1. The power had also visited him in his attempt at seeing the small world of the Iron Rock. The power did not look as mystical or magical as Daniel had expected. He was a yellow humanoid animal in appearance, but his clothing seemed to somehow odd in its style. At last a new time has come. You shall never again wonder about yourself. Thoughts will intrigue you and pass through your mind in much detail, giving you insight into worlds and realms unseen by another man. With my words I reveal to you that which I am. Your quest has been the same as mine to bring this peace to the world, peace through a wonderful gift that you possess. This gift is the knowledge that I am you, or more precisely, your conscience. The power said to Daniel. The power continued. Your heart is a heart of good. You have so far pursued the path of what is right and have stood by your beliefs. Though you have not been highly regarded by others, you shall rise up anew with a discerning and robust spirit. No wrong will be found in your heart, and you will lead a life devoid of regret, blame, or shame. The voice will share my power with you at the chosen time. As your destiny revealed, I was in pain while you, as well as the rest of Quemzon, were ignorant. I was trapped within you because you did not believe, and I was not able to help you until your faith was firmly established. I know you desired to believe, but you had doubts because of the town, casting shadows on your faith. Once you began to have it, I was able to help you, not only for my freedom, but to bring you new life. He concluded, I knew that you were alone. Daniel, I washed you from your birth. I have felt alone because the world has turned away from me. I know you do not have fond memories of that town, but remember your childhood and remember you did have a true friend then. Now you feel alone because he is gone and Xanthir does not remember your friendship. Times will change when you make things right. Do not give up, for I have given you what you need to succeed. Daniel was astonished by what was said. He yearned for more, this time more than ever before. He had in fact tapped into the very heart of his soul and could see who he really was. He asked the power, How will I see you again? to be able to see myself. The power responded, I am always here and will be until your quest is complete. You will form new examples of change, define new philosophies, and train all of these with a correct and perfect life. You will be a corrector, and your actions will allow men to believe in higher powers, should they choose to. You will perform many miracles on Quimson and do many deeds such that it will take more than the pinnacle archives to document. Know now that your name is Warlock. With this title, you will bring peace to Quemzon by locking the wars of the conscience that rage in people's minds that hold them captive from peace. Warlock believed the power, yet wondered about these wars. But these wars can still be unlocked. Yes, in Quemzon they can because peace cannot last forever. Only in the new world you will dream of being can peace endure. Warlock did not doubt what was spoken by the power, understanding that his consciousness was formed of many levels. Warlock wondered why the power had given him such a name, why his own conscience gave him that name. His idea of bringing peace certainly stood against the beliefs that one would see in a title like Warlock. However, he took this name to heart and trusted in this deeper part of himself. Warlock replied, I understand, for you have opened my mind. I understand now that you could not be free without my belief. I will peer down into the depths of knowledge, down to the seat of creation, and learn about all that has happened and why it became that way. I shall never hunger or thirst for knowledge of where to go for this is always inside me, and I can search my heart and examine the ways to present these things in full. Yes, Warlock, you shall create eternal peace. 
In time you shall be given a new spiritual name beyond that of Warlock, and then you will finish your work. Warlock questioned, Can you reveal my true name? The power replied, When the time is right, you will learn your name, but only when you are ready when you reach the end of your journey. Your name is sacred, and when spoken will give you the key to finishing your work. You must be ready at that time, or you will fail in your journey. As for now, you do not fully understand the physical, which you must, before you can advance to the spiritual. Though the fire has gone out in the physical world, it only showed that you had made a permanent choice to follow a more spiritual goal. I shall be with you until the end. Now sleep, for later you will receive your true warlock name. Warlock slept the rest of the night, drifting from Riddicon 3 back to the original dream world of Riddicon 2. The green pasture and sentinel lake of Riddicon 2 formed merely the base of this world. From this base could spawn any globe he would imagine. Thus, his now ordinary dream world was Riddicon 2. He didn't train that night as he pondered and meditated on what he learned and what had so graciously been revealed to him. He had always thought of warlocks as something of a nuisance, something loathsome and evil. He started to realize that he was reinventing the meaning of this word. He redefined this essential word which had always meant male witch. Warlock, the enchanter, would show many people the truth about what it was said to be a warlock. The main distinguishing characteristics between himself, Warlock, and a wizard was that the wizards are compelled to do good by their laws and beliefs and their attention to ethical and honorable behavior. Warlock, not fixed to a set of laws or rules, chose his own path. This was to avoid evil. This was a result of the power's goodness and his own desire to be dominant in knowledge and not wickedness. Warlock believed that everything in all creation came down to a fundamental good, even the people he considered to be evil in his old town. Everything was intended for some purpose, which was in turn meant for good. Warlock believed that under the control of the power, good would eventually triumph. As the young Warlock would soon realize, he was the one who made this real. The power trusted in him, and the glory that was created for him, was given solely to the one who created this world by way of the voice. Warlock rose, content from the Riddicon 3 vision and Riddicon 2 dream. He was sure of the truth in what the power said. His mind wandered from picture to picture, and among his thoughts, the central struggle was the fact that he didn't have all the abilities that he felt he wanted, even though he had not believed his dreams while he was there from the beginning. His changes in character were shown. He now believed in the dreams while he lucidly experienced them. This gave him the freedom to explore the depths of his imagination that had beforehand led him to doubt. Warlock said to Magistro, I believe I am ready for faster learning. I will do as you say, as you have never led me astray. Please teach me more. Yes, I have been many places, Magistro responded. I have many answers to the questions you seek. However, I do not have all the answers, so you must find the power at new levels of awareness that guide you as his knowledge surpasses my own. Your heart has shown your enthusiasm and eagerness to learn. You have yet to learn all the basics of your gift. Do not rush quickly or blindly into learning, for you need time to meditate on the aspects of your lesson so as not to forget or confuse them. We must not forget the physical world where many people will never have the chance that you have been given. As of now, your training and learning advance you beyond many people in the world. Heed all of my advice, for I have lived much the same as you and have learned much from the power. In a sense, it was you teaching me since your conscience had created all of what we are, and now, as your teacher, I hope you to understand and to reveal to you what lies inside. 
we are learning continually from one another, and soon we shall part in knowledge as your abilities begin to exceed mine. You will then have no further need for my assistance. Warlock said, Many times I've wanted my wishes to come true. I focused and tried, but often failed. When I receive my true warlock name, I'll do these things. Perhaps I could grant the wishes of the truly downtrodden. However, people are greedy and may ask for more than they can handle. How will I be able to decide what is sufficient to satisfy their longings and be able to account for the wishes of everyone? You shall develop a more advanced consciousness. As I have said to you before, you will be able to accomplish many tasks simultaneously. Magistro replied, You must focus because there are many things you will miss if you do not pay the utmost attention to your lessons. Question not the iniquity of the world, for it, as you know, will be silenced, and you will advance to rule over your own world. You will learn the meaning of eternity, for you will live as long as these two worlds, the old and the new, exist. With his vigorous curiosity, he asked Magistro, Can you teach me to sing? I don't know any songs, but I'd like to learn. Magistro replied, Yes, I can teach you to sing. Music is one of the many languages you should learn to connect with different types of people. Music can make some of the most hardened personalities respond to your message. This is your song of strength. Listen carefully, for I shall sing it but once, and it speaks to your growth and success. Sleep, you one. You need your rest. Tomorrow will be a great day. Imagine for once a courageous fight, but be calm as you lie tonight. This is the strength you will have to break the unbreakable staff, and upon cutting the staff of wars, it leaves peace forevermore. Awake, young one, for the battle begins. Prepare the words you have made. Be willing to fight and do not flee, for you will not meet utter defeat. Go to battle this first time against many thousand men your size. Inherit the land that is yours and speak to its boundaries far. Listen at the end of what is said. Your journey has finally begun. Warlock enjoyed what was said and how Magistro had made these words entertaining. However, he was slightly concerned, and he said, I hope there is no fight tomorrow. Magistro replied, No, this battle is throughout your entire life. Tomorrow is arbitrary. It can come at any time, and not just once, but many times. Both your soul song and song of strength show your outcome. Your destiny grows more assured with each passing moment. It will continue to grow, and you shall no longer be held in suspense of what these things mean. Now follow the song and rest. Your training continues with each passing day, including the nocturnal activities. Listen to your dreams. Warlock remembered this song and applied it to his heart, so that he could think about the power that he would inherit. He spoke. I'll rest and learn more tomorrow. I'll grow stronger and wiser until the day that I surpass even the strongest and wisest of men. I feel that I am more sympathetic now, as my hate toward Rezaeth seems to have receded. I do not want to fall behind at work to be done. Good night, Magistro. Since Magistro had informed Warlock when he first arrived to address him as teacher, Warlock was showing a change to feel comfortable in addressing him by name. Magistro responded, Go to dream now, for tomorrow I will teach you of another true story. Now rest and remember your dream when you wake. Warlock's dream of Riddicon III was filled with power and intrigued him in this training world. Sentinel Lake of his heart was prominent as was the Amorcus Tree of Knowledge fires of magical strength and the power, with wisdom and consciousness, were here. All that pertained to Warlock was here, 
He was at peace in this world and continually learned. His destiny from Riddikon 1 opened up new doors of creation and impressionism. Upon his Riddikon 3, pleasing emotions were always lively here. The wind seemed to be performing a messenger's duty and carried the knowledge from the Amorchus tree in huge waves outward into Riddikon 2 and throughout Riddikon 3. Education was now easily seen in Riddikon 3, in its red and yellow hues, forming quite an objective view, not so in the subjective world, he left behind in his temporary separation from the continual Quemzon. However, Warlock could choose whether he wanted to see this knowledge visibly and would not always have a need to actually see these red and yellow waves. They only let him know how commanding the presence of expertise was in Riddicon 3. Warlock's heart burned with the anticipation of what he was to receive. In Riddicon 3, he clearly communicated with the creator of the Valexano universe. Warlock spoke into Riddicon 3. It is I, without a spiritual name that comes to you again, to learn more about myself my destiny, and all the paths to follow along the way. Teach about what awaits me. The power responded, Young warlock, without a name and without limit, you shall inherit my power when you learn yourself fully. You must learn about the world and all its wisdom and become sentient of this information. For I know all there is among men, and you must become knowledgeable of this as well. Slowly will be revealed to you, to allow your original mind to take hold and not let go of any, otherwise it will lose vital insight. Tell me about the future and what it holds. Teach me to open my mind to accept that which inevitably awaits me. You have learned focus and concentration quite well. You must concentrate on yourself and on what you and I are. Allow your awareness to grow to the proficiency of your concentration in all aspects. Meditate on these perceptions so as not to let them waste away from a misunderstanding of what they represent. As you peer down to the smallest particles within Sentinel Lake that reflect the waves of pure knowledge, you must understand the intricate detail involved. You must also be able to manipulate multiple pieces together, or your task will become too complex and time-consuming for you to accomplish within your short life. Do not miss any detail. Learn control so as not to be taken by surprise at the enormity of your task. Warlock took these words to heart and applied them to his labor. He focused on Sentinel Lake, containing the water of consciousness and wisdom. In fact, being that these waters were his spiritual essence, they gave him the energy to live his dream. His focus grew more acute and precise. At once, he saw the individual water particles separate into individual unique bodies. These units of power were remarkable, different than the iron he studied before. The water created greater possibilities because it gave life. As he peered down, he could see that each particle of water was really three smaller spheres, attached to one another, surrounded by flickering shells. Warlock focused on one ball and struggled to concentrate and reflect on the other balls simultaneously. Through persistence and his focus upon Sentinel Lake, he reached Riddicon 4. Riddicon 4 was much like Riddicon 3, except it had an abundance of life. Many animals came to drink at the waters of Sentinel Lake. As Riddicon 4 was closer to the realization of the dream of the power, it was closer to the origin of life. These animals did not fear Warlock and came to him. His world showed a unity that many would have desired. The power spoke. You have more dream levels than you realize, but very few are accessible to you because of your inexperience. You will learn to travel to these at any time. However, you must be relaxed enough in one level to move up to the next, and each level will become increasingly more challenging to achieve, you must be at peace in Riddicon 3 to jump to Riddicon 4. This was how you found Riddicon 4. You must demonstrate patience to advance. 
To comprehend the changes you will make in physical objects, you must become proficient at traveling to these higher levels, like Riticon 4, so the sheer numbers of particles you control will not overwhelm you. As for now, you can only see five of these flickering entities at a time. If you travel further, you will split your consciousness, giving you insight into seeing more. In this way, you will experience more detail by continually splitting your consciousness. You will then be able to go beyond even Riticon 4, which is your current limit because of inexperience. When you have altered what you have decided to in your higher dream worlds and for your work to have an effect, you will also need to learn to bring these forms back past the lower dream levels until you reach the physical. You will soon see how amazingly quick you can affect objects as you retain your skills from the higher levels. In fact, working hard in Riticon 4 will allow you to manipulate enough of Sentinel Lake for your work to form a new creation. You will need caution at the depths of this level so as not to disturb too much. You still have much experience to gain to find all your levels. Now make it to your quest to focus on the water of Sentinel Lake here in Riticon 4. You will turn its waters into a more complex structure, continuing to fulfill your possibilities. Now, concentrate on this collection of specs and continue your learning. Warlock listened intently to the wise power's words. He then focused on five of the water particles, allowing his mind to move away from awareness. He felt a greater emotion here than he was used to in Quemzon, being closer to the level of the dream. He relaxed more while maintaining his focus adequately on the particles, and he felt himself drift to a more profound feeling realm, much the same in appearance but with a larger number of intense intertwined feelings. Though it was still Riticon 4, he realized the breadth of this level, how far and deep it spanned. The same familiar particulate figures appeared, yet he could see five where one was before. He relaxed further, knowing this stage of relaxation was very near to one who was without the breath of life. He faded again, knowing his consciousness was split between the worlds, and he could feel himself in multiple levels at the same time. He increased his concentration until many entities appeared. The power spoke to him. You have gained the ability to take into account every possibility in the radius of your choosing. In this, you touch the broadest reach of Riticon 4. As you return from this to lower dream realms, you will find it more difficult each time to transfer your energy to a lower level. Continue to focus as you move back to lower levels. Attempt to retain any of the details you have acquired. You will be able to apply these aspects of the upper levels to your state at lower levels. You have been wise to halt your search where you are. You found that it is easy to discover detail, but hard to keep it. When you have in mind what you want to bring to lower levels, you will need to pause to make sure that the energy is balanced so you don't lose control. Then you will be more knowledgeable about the outcome of your actions. In this, you will leave what you do not desire to change untouched. You will not destroy or change beyond repair that which you do not wish to change. You shall see what I mean in future time. At this, the power disappeared. Warlock heeded his advice and, using his mind, toyed with the collection of specs, billions upon billions at a time. He found it interesting how combined bits would form other, more massive structures. He also found it became more and more difficult as he progressed downward past Riticon 3. Already, he saw the difficulty of this task as too much to think about on his way to Riticon 2, barely being able to hold them in his mind. Warlock stopped at Riticon 2, noting that the last clumps of matter were more substantial and were connected differently than the spheres of Sentinel Lake. These new entities were gargantuan. He called back his thoughts into one distinct form upon Sentinel Lake in Riticon 2 and found the simplicity of this current level a relief. He took one last look into his lake's waters upon which the yellow sun of Riticon shone brightly. An apple-sized shiny yellow spherical object caught his eye at the bottom of the lake. Reaching in, he pulled it out and felt the warmth of his recent creation amongst the fresh water.
Warlock spoke confidently. Finally, my ability has been revealed to me, for a more valuable asset to this lake has been created, and so will further aid my power. He was surprised, for the substance he held in his hand in Riddicon II was pure gold. <laughs>